Hey there, Shooby Doodlers. How are you doing? I'm just checking things. Uh, what day is it? It is Sunday, the 7th of March. And thank you very much for being here on a Sunday. Um, I, don't, I don't know how many people will be there. How many? Not many, probably. Any, can I see on the... Uh, no, I'm not getting... Oh, I need to open this window up a little bit so I can see what we've got. We're 11 people. 11 people. Hello there. Welcome <laughs> to a Sunday afternoon. It's a lovely Sunday afternoon here now. Um, <sighs> I'm feeling much better. Thank you. And uh, today we are going to draw a German pointer, uh, which Jennifer has sent in. And um, let me go over to... Yeah, you want to see you want to see Hunter. Let me show you. Here is Hunter, uh, who's a three legged German short haired pointer. Hunter was two years old when he was thrown from the back of a pickup truck. The man driving took him to a clinic and instructed the vet. And here I do my worst American accent. He says, put that dog down. He's a horrible hunting dog. No, I shouldn't do it like that, should I really? And he left. Uh, state. Uh, not all hunters talk like that. In the, no. Anyway, so state laws didn't allow them to put Hunter down. They tried to bolt the leg back on, but it didn't really work. Jennifer adopted the dog so she could make the legal decision to remove the leg. Hunter was like a new dog. He was very athletic, loved to swim and walk. And we learned much from Hunter besides how to clean up shredded cushions, fill in holes, books and repair wounds. He taught us not to let our past dictate our futures and no disability should stop you from pursuing life with sheer gusto. That is a wonderful sentiment, uh, which we should all try and remember. And I, I think there's something about pets that they do kind of remind us these things, don't they? And um, especially three-legged pointers who are, you know, just full of energy and designed for racing around the place and dying, pointing when they see game for you to shoot at. Um, and uh, yeah, and three legs, you would think, would really stop you quite a lot, you know, missing a leg. But obviously Hunter has just sort of really gone for it. So uh, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to draw Hunter. And you can see I've been sort of doing some little sketches. And these are sketches of Mac that we did yesterday. Um, these are kind of things I do watching the telly, watching the TV. It's kind of getting the, the height and the, the relative height of legs and things like that. Uh, lady Diger. Um, there she is again, and oh, that's going to be tomorrow. Um, so let's have a little think about drawing Hunter. And let me see if I do that, then I'll be able to see where I am. I can zoom in a little bit there. No, oh, that's probably too much. And I'm going to get a pencil and <laughs> I'm going to find my glasses. <laughs> Um, if you want to put comments uh, in the chat, then please do. But I'm going to, uh, I'll answer your questions and things at the end. Any questions, put them in the chat and I will answer them at the end. Uh, but I'm just going to sort of plow on through um, so I don't lose my concentration, really. So um, the, uh, uh, why am I doing this? You can see up at the top here, <laughs> my Walker books. And I got these yesterday. Finally, this is so hot off the press. Uh, this is the second book in my Walker series. Uh, this is the first one. Walker, the boy who can talk to dogs. He really can. He can talk to dogs. It's not even magic. It's like real. <laughs> he really can. And um, uh, and this is the second book, which is coming out on the 25th of this month. It's being published. So I'm doing a dog every day this month until publication. Day. It's set, in fact, it's going to be the day after publication day because I wasn't well one day following my COVID jab. And... Um, so I missed that day, so I'm going to have to do the day after as well. And in fact, in this story, we do have a couple of pointers called Thor and Loki, uh, who play a big part in the story, actually. Quite a big part. Uh, although I, I think there aren't many actual pictures of them in here. Um, and so I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't have a pointer in, in this. But the reason I'm doing these drawings is the next book is what I'm working on at the moment. Um, and in that, I'm planning to have a group of influencer dogs, like sort of dogs of Instagram, famous dogs, uh, who will all sort of come together in a big show, uh, a sort of dogs of influence show. And um, 
and, and and so I've been asking you, you can have your dog. You can have me create your dog as a character uh, for my next book uh, in this show uh, by following the links in the description below and, uh, and, and sending me pictures of your dog and telling me something about them. And I thought maybe I shouldn't have a pointer. And then I remembered uh, uh, that the pointers, oh, I hope I'm not going to give the plot away, but anyway, they will, Thor and Loki, the pointers at the moment, as far as I know, are not going to be in the next story. Um, so, so I can have a completely different pointer. So that's absolutely fine. Now pointers um, have these sort of very domed heads like that. And we're going to want, um, no, it's not these very long kind of chops like that and eyes. And, and now the thing I have to keep saying um, when I'm doing this is that this is not a portrait. It's it's a car car it's not even a caricature. It's it's a um, it's a character. It's a character for a book. So so I'm not trying to draw a perfect <laughs> kind of um, sort of portrait of a dog. Um, and we want this tail sticking straight out because that's the big kind of pointer thing. And pointers will quite often they'll sort of hold that front paw up, stick their tail straight out and point in the direction of where, where, <laughs> where they've seen the game to, to help shoot at. And, uh, and of course, if you've got three legs and you lift your front leg up, you're going to dong. So we can't have that pose. Um, and um, so pointers have really quite deep chests like that. And quite deep. Let me just have another look at... Um, See quite powerful, big, powerful uh, elbows, uh, elbows, shoulders on there. Very powerful shoulders and uh, quite powerful back legs. But th those are really powerful front. Um, let's get back to that. Uh, the, the, this part here is, is really, really powerful and quite sort of forward. And I've been showing how we've got the uh, scapula, the shoulder blade up there. And we have the um, uh, shoulder joint there. And then we'll sort of go back a little bit, probably to the elbow. And then that's going to come down here to the ankle, which has a little ankle bone sticking out. And then the mm, metacarpals, carpals and metacarpals and things like that. And then digits at the bottom like that. So, so and then this great deep chest and then also at the back, we're going to have the legs that are coming down, and when we have the um, hip to the knee, sort of hip there, knee, and then all the way down to the ankle, and again, uh, tarsals <laughs> and digits at the end. Uh, so they really stand on their toes. And let's go back and have a look at that picture there, and we can't really see um, if I can. Um, get the, the this, this little part here um, is it's not that pronounced it's not massive so um, let's come back here so, so I'm going to bring that sort of down there and just a little sort of bit actually probably straight down there which means then we can get that kind of curve coming down there like that and then we're going to want that along there and I think, I think I'm making I think I'm making Hunter look sort of really quite rangy with the very long legs, turning into a um, a greyhound or something, a long-eared greyhound. And so we want these legs to be really quite chunky at the front, They're quite solid rather rather than chunky. Sort of coming down to there, and then. We've got a little carpal pad at the back there. Again there, that will come sort of down there. That will go up there, and we want the tail sticking straight out there. And then I, I, I'm, I have chosen to do it from this angle here, 
so the th fourth leg could be just hidden behind there but i think if you were just looking at it think wait wait a minute you'd think he's left a leg out i don't want to draw attention to it <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think hunter wants us to draw attention to it either. so i'm feeling in fact i just want to kind of make this head just a fractionally bigger i think and bring that out there like that and it's very long sort of square chops and just gonna have a nice little smile which of course dogs don't really have like that except mm, tomorrow <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you all about smiling dogs tomorrow um i think that's kind of getting there so um there's a phase that i left out in this drawing yesterday I didn't get my layout pad out so this is um and, and, and i paid for it because there were things i would have corrected <laughs> first um and so here i'm thinking bring that down there and, and so here i can sort of just get it kind of a bit more exactly how i'm i'm wanting it and everything in the right place um and what was i saying so smiling dogs yeah so i'm i've got tomorrow planned <laughs> and uh, keep doing a dog a day a dog of influence and we're going to want a buckle kind of there like that and a, a name tag and mm, yeah sort of I just have a, a, a H in there. So we want a little bit of shoulder into the back and then kind of round into the rump, down into the ankle. And then here we can sort of come down into, oh, hang on, that's, if I had originally got some tape, which I had thought about, <laughs> I can hear you screaming at the screen saying, take your hand away, you can't see what you're doing. Um, there we are, that's better. <laughs> um, I was trying to hold on to the paper so that it didn't sort of slip off. And then we can bring the tail out there like that. Um, and then that will sort of come up like that. And we don't want to see a huge amount of the uh, this sort of elbow part there and then we want little sort of carpal bits there and that's going there um yeah so this this sort of phase and and here i know some people think oh, it's ch cheating um but it's like i say it's only cheating if you're tracing other people's work and claiming it as your own this is uh a long <laughs> try, well, tried and trusted way of getting your composition right. I couldn't remember composition the other day. Thanks, Crispin. <laughs> I think it's not a word that I've used much, I don't think. I think, um, I, yeah, I think it's because I, I didn't really have sort of formal art training, so, and I think that's where you get words like composition, form, and stuff like that. So, um, I'm actually going to do a course next month, which is going to be interesting. Uh, um, a watercolour kind of course. So here we are. I've got um, get the right side of this. Um, this is C white again. I, I I use a lot of C white things. So <laughs> C white sketchbook. You can see it on the just about see it on the bottom there. They are C white of Brighton. C white sketchbook. This is C white um, watercolor paper. This is three hundred and fifty grams, which is really good and heavy. And for something like this, I don't need to, you know, tape it down. It's, going to stay flat it's not going to ruckle because it's so thick and now I'm going to get my pen that looks like it's just about empty that's better and 
let me think so I'm going to start about there and then I'm going to bring this this great big floppy ears the German pointer I have known a pointer in in the past and um, when I was very young and my first ever attempt at okay, <laughs> um freelance as a kind of illustrator kind of thing oh golly those weird days this is back in the back in the 70s oh. <laughs> in the dark ages and a friend of mine he he ran a big supermarket but he and his wife also they had this little store in town and it was um a kind of uh, you know soaps and you know sort of kind of a drugstore kind of thing but but without um you know dispensing drugs kind of stuff like that so it was all soap and toothpaste and stuff like that which they used to get at the cash and carry and then they sort of sold it and <laughs> he had a little office doing nothing upstairs and he said why don't you come and work up there in town so that's what i did i went and set up in um in the office upstairs and then i would i did sort of artwork for local newspapers and things like that so i would go down we had three free newspapers in the town I think, and i would uh, go uh, and knock on the door say have you, you, you only work for me and they'd go oh yeah so 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 the piano shot they want to they want an advert. <laughs> so I would walk down to the piano shop and I'd say hello. Oh, hello. Come and have a cup of coffee. And we'd sit there and chat and discuss what they wanted on their advert. And um, and I remember particularly the piano shop. He wanted a tiny little advert about that size. I said, oh, what would be really cool is if you had this really long one like that. And he had this great long piano and a guy playing it on roller skates and he's going up and down from one end to the other. And he said, you're a really good salesman. I was only going to buy a little slot like that. And you made me buy about four, four times the length. And uh, so I used to go sort of do stuff like that. And then also I used to um, kind of sign and paint. I used to do sign writing and stuff like that for shops. And, and then I used to do all their you know, sort of uh, bargain of the week signs in the shop window and all that sort of thing. It was all quite fun. Um, and then uh, and then they decided to move to Australia. I decided to go to art college as well, so that made a difference. And, and they had a pointer called Dougal, that's why. Yeah, and so the, the, the shop was called Dougal's. And those were the days, A. Eh? And we bring that down nice and smooth because it's a very smooth dog. What I want to have another look at is can we see, can't really see, no. I don't whether we can see any sort of hint of claws, whether I should have something like that. Was it just sticking out? I don't know. And then let's have that rump coming down like that. Nice. And over the ankle. And there we go and i'm thinking i might have some kind of um, stones and pebbles on the ground when you do things like this don't just draw lots of circles start make sure you've got some that are kind of underneath the paws as well like that um, and then you can sort of fill in around and sort of half ones maybe behind like that because otherwise it, it just doesn't quite look right. It doesn't look like an even spread of sort of gravelly stone things like that. Cool. I can switch that off. And, oops, put that about there. And then we can start painting. But first of all, before I do that, I'm just going to make sure it's absolutely dry with my hair dryer. I 
did a little test thing earlier. <laughs> I had this idea that um, I could maybe uh, get some rubber film stuff that is liquid, liquid rubber that you kind of paint around the outside. And then I could sort of wet this area and have a mask over the top <laughs> like that. And then I got a brush and sort of flicked uh, paint on there to, to get this kind of spotty effect. And it sort of worked, but it was, it's, it's too messy. So what I'm gonna have to do is to get my brush. And this is, um, you're gonna get so bored with me telling you all this every time. <laughs> this is an aquash, a Pentel aquash paint brush. It's a water brush. You can, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and you'll find Amazon links down below. I'm an affiliate. Yeah, I'll get a, I'll, I'll, I'll get a commission if you buy one <laughs> following the links. Uh, but um, you don't pay any extra, I promise. So, but you'll be helping me to keep this channel going if you buy anything from my links down below, including my books. Dun, dun, dun. There are links to these down below. This isn't available in the States on Amazon yet, but this one is, and you might want to read that first. So, <laughs> so there you go. Um, and what I'm gonna do is to make sure this is clean. So the water is in the handle. And when I squeeze it slightly, don't kind of squeeze it like mad, it's just light pressure. Um, then the water will flow and I can make sure then that any paint that is in the brush is cleaned off on the kitchen towel. And I am going to start sort of round about here and I'm just going to do, that's just clean water and nothing else. And also in that little bit there, and then I can handle this for the moment as a, um, uh, what, 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 <laughs> keeping it, keeping it wet. So I want to be doing wet on wet kind of stuff here. I've got a little brush, I've lost it. <laughs> I had another little brush I was using. Let me see if I got another one. Um, I think maybe I could use that one, yes. Mm, mm, mm. I took it in to clean it. Oh no, there we are, I found it, here we are. Right, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, ooh, ah, I'm gonna use burnt umber, and I'm gonna get my uh, jam jar of water here. If you hear tinkle tinkle, that's what it is. And I got burnt umber, and I'm hoping, I'm just gonna check again that this is wet. So I want this all to be, Nice and wet there and in there. And then with a little bit of burnt umber, then I should be able to just start putting in these nice little spots to get that kind of soft, that soft <laughs> short head pointer kind of look spottiness like that and then Start on the edges and then you can fill in a little bit like that. So that can be, I'm, I'm thinking this is gonna be sort of drying a little bit and then I want to just put some little slightly darker bits on the top. And yeah. Okay, so I've done that in this little area here so that I can keep it under control because next I've got to do this great big area here. And again, let's go and have another look at the tail, which you can't quite tell because, I, I'm, oh, I wonder whether the hunter actually has a tail. Has that gone as well? Because I assumed that that was the tail there. I'm going to, well, my hunter has a tail, okay, because <laughs> that's such a, a big thing about uh, a, a, a pointer. <laughs> it's the tail. So what we're going to have is this is going to be dark right down at the bottom. And we're going to continue this kind of color across the top. Um, the, there's something else we need to do is to have just slightly more um, on the 
top there and in the sh sort of shadows like that and then just bring them slowly out and again maybe just in there a bit maybe we'd have a bit more up there so so by adding extra dots we're um, sort of giving it a, a bit of shape and form to it now a lot of these are actually going to be painted over in a short while uh, but we need to get this sort of basis underneath so so it's a bit of planning involved with this one you know other dogs it's bish bosh bash and sort of <laughs> paint a great load of sort of undercoat and see how it goes so this is going to be again so i'm painting this clear water so that the paper is going to be nice and wet and down into the tail as well and it's sort of keeping it keeping it wet so that we get this wet on wet style when we start dropping in the color i'm just going to add a little bit of blue in with that there just to darken it up a bit and i'm going to start up on the top here right on the edge And I'm going to add a bit more in there actually because this is a bit sort of more grey black that I've sort of added in here. And you need to work quickly here because it's going to be drying all the time, especially under the lights. And <laughs> this is where it would be so much easier to spray this and you know flick it from a brush. But you really need to mask it well. Um I'm not sure I'm going to be fast enough here. <laughs> All right, keep, keep going, keep going, don't stop. So we want to, we want it to keep, keep where I sort of wet the page. We want it to keep going, staying wet, so that we get this nice soft kind of look as every little drop. I put on there just kind of explodes a bit. I think it's really dry down here on the leg, unfortunately. It's drying out very quickly. So I should have I should have done the legs individually or something, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> and There we go. So we're also we're trying to think about getting have a little bit of blue in with that grey. So we're thinking about having you know a bit of sort of shadow in there with these dots, and maybe we can suggest a bit more of the um, the line of the the leg going up into the body there, and probably a bit more on the edges to give that sort of sense of curvature. 3d form like that it's a very different kind of color to what we've got going on here <laughs> unfortunately um, managed to keep that exactly the same so i'm going to try and do something about that just kind of bring that along like that and this is um I th this is a, a Rosemary and Co brush series 307 which I think is called a spotting brush and you can see that it does <laughs> it does give you sort of spotting so I'm just gonna bring this down and, and as it comes it should sort of create this sense of curvature so that it's sort of darker on the top and lighter on the bottom and let's keep that around on the haunches we'll have that in there and then we're going to want a little bit sort of darker into there oh, I think that's a bit too much maybe uh -huh. a lot of muttering going on <laughs> so uh, we're going to do that and then just some sort of random and then and then you can sort of get you 
So sort of add, but but at the same time, by adding more water, it's thinning down the strength of the color. So so you can kind of do it that way, either either with sort of bigger blobs or thinner blobs or lighter, paler, weaker blobs. I think that's sort of doing quite well at the moment. So I get a bit of um, burnt sienna in there, add a bit of burnt umber, just to get that kind of lovely rich brown. And I'm gonna start on these legs. So this is gonna be pretty much just an undercoat. And these are sort of, sort of dark <laughs> socks. And, and then they want to just sort of spot their way up to, to join the rest there. And then the same at the back here. And he's quite a complicated thing to, <laughs> to paint, actually, compared oh, I've got a right one tomorrow. Um, yeah, so, okay. And then we can have uh, like that. Gonna be yeah, so now we need to add a bit of sort of shape and form here, so I'm gonna add those in there. This is where I would normally be using my water brush here, isn't it? So let's see how that works. Water brush works very, very differently because you have this water that's flowing behind. When you're using a normal brush, then you pick up um you pick up a load of colour and it sort of stays the same amount of colour same intensity all the time whereas with a water brush you constantly got this water being added so it does get thinner the, the color gets thinner the more you paint that the it's more tinted i suppose i suppose that's how you would put it hmm. it's <laughs> Yeah, watercolor is, is, you know, uh, as again I've said many times, it, the light is coming from the, the paper. The paper is the light source, and so you're what you're doing is putting these thin, transparent glazes over the top, which you build up, and and, and so you know the thinner they are, the more light can get through. And now instead of making it darker, so less light is actually getting through and if we're getting more, um, the color is actually kind of reflected light off off the, the brown color there, rather than having that luminous uh, light coming through those thin glazes. So. So as you sort of keep painting, the, the paint runs out and it just starts flowing water. And so, so when you've got, mm, let me try to do this here. So if we've got some there, but as I keep sort of painting, in theory, it will sort of fade out, which it is, it's doing, it's just sort of fading out, isn't it? As, as the paint gets replaced by water flowing down from the handle. Right, now we have, let me just check my sketches again. <laughs> and, um, where are we now? Just remembering quite where the, the nose bits are going. So again, I'm going into this burnt umber uh, with a little bit of burnt sienna just to warm it up a little bit. And we are going to want to have um, a big splodge kind of like that across the front and then we've got a kind of a a splodge like that and a splodge like that so there's dark all the way along the top so this is then coming down sort of like that And we want to work that so that the little dots that are done already <laughs> disappear underneath this brown. But but instead of having a white 
sort of patch then we have this um, spotty kind of patch there instead and then I can paint that ear pretty solid and that can stay about that kind of color and then I'm gonna want that pretty dark underneath there like that and I think we can have quite a bit of dark in there so I'm 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 just it's still wet and so I'm just dropping in a darker you know which I've taken straight off the the pan rather than um, rather than mixing it in here which will then sort of thin it down a little bit and I'll clean the brush <laughs> uh, no it's not quite right yet and then I'm just sort of dragging this color backwards to fill in that space there and I think we still need a bit more down there and I'm going to add a bit of ultramarine French ultramarine to get something grey to have a bit of sort of shadow in there uh, oh, so that we can just differentiate that back leg a bit and then also we're going to need to do that to get sort of a black so this is the <laughs> this is the Cotman sketches set this is a real good really good starter set but you don't get black in this one you do get white but I don't use that um, black because this is where the light is coming from because the light is coming from the paper you don't want to put black over it because it takes all the light away um, so use greys and things like that which you can create out of blues and browns and um, all my patrons, <laughs> I hope you're watching. They know that generally I use um, another color called neutral tint for doing grays. Um, but uh, I think I'll do grays in these little pebbles. Why not? And um, but you can use the if, you know if you uh, I use a thing called neutral tint, and if you can't find that, you can use Payne's gray or something like that. If you just want a gray that's ready mixed and I use grays a lot because in the book these are all painted uh, in gray tones because it's a black and white book so uh, let me find a piece of artwork so this is this is the actual artwork from the book so this is all sort of drawn in in black ink and then painted in neutral tint in that one color so that's why neutral tint is my favorite color because I tend to use it a lot just on its own uh, let me just put those little pebbles in there and then what we can also do is is by thinning that down um, and we can draw some other little pebbles in there and they can maybe um, sort of blend in with other ones but without they haven't got um, a you know, black line around them or anything like that. And I'm going to, I'm going to warm up Hunter's eyes. If we go and have a look again, you can't really see, he's got very sort of brown eyes in a brown face. Uh, <laughs> doesn't help us much. So I'm going to put some yellow in here and I'm going to leave a little bit of white up at the top there and while it, I can I'm going to try and also smooth out some of these bits that have painted over the black like that just try and smooth that line out and then I'm going to get a bit of uh, burnt sienna and uh, I'm trying to get the point of the brush and then I'll just point that over that little white bit and then drag it down into the yellow so sort of orange it up a bit and then that just kind of makes the eye look a bit more liquid as well and then hunter has a kind of a lime green <laughs> um, color so yeah very stylish so we get a bit of lemon yellow a bit of i think that's hooker's green actually i'll, I'll tell you what i'll just 
I'll just paint it all and I'll give it a second coat to give it a bit of 3D. Um, and I add a bit more French ultramarine down here to the browns to get that grey. And then I'm going to add have a bit of shadow like that. Clean the brush. I just kind of pull the colour out like that. Um, while well, we got that there, add a bit of shadow underneath there and underneath the um, the ear as well. We get a bit of shadow there, probably a bit of shadow I think, in there, which we can fade out by cleaning the brush. Um, we're going to need a little bit of blue or something on the on that. Oh, we need a bit of shading underneath that. Oh, I was going to do that in green. Let, right, let's do the <laughs> let's do this buckle first, like that. And I'm going to get my hair dryer. So I get a little bit of extra green in there, just to give a sort of a hint of thickness to the to the leather on that. And then I think I think we just need a little H on there, like that. And then down here, I can just put Hunter. And then I can come and answer your question. See what you've been saying. Uh, if I go to that and then I move oh, that over to there, then you can see the picture while I talk. It's like magic. <laughs> uh, where are we now? So um, we have got, let me have a look at all that we have got. <laughs> Octavia B, hello, Chris Spin, hi. <laughs> Karen Millen, hello. We're getting a lot of the same people. Jennifer, hi, good morning. <laughs> hello, oh, Hunter is amazing. G. Alan Cook, many, many people talk like that in Arkansas, sadly. <laughs> That's when I was talking to Matt the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, we were talking about accents yesterday. You know, it's... Um, I suppose we see lots of kind of films when American films and the shoot, the, you know, the hunters, they're always talking like they and, and we were brought up on that, on uh, what's his name? We're, we're Elmer Third, weren't we? With um, Bugs Bunny, Bugs Bunny and Elmer Third with his big gun, I'm going to get that bunny and put him in a pie. That's the one, you see, it been... <laughs> Um, what's the word? In 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 inducted something, but you know, it's from a very very early age. Uh, good afternoon, Shoe Dumb Frog. Hello, Karina says incredible dog pottery lady show. Absolutely, yes, I keep drawing you all the time. That's Siobhan Wheeler. So, uh, anyway, uh, the Dumb Frog. I wish I could talk to dogs. It would be very helpful because my dog whines a lot, so it'd be good to know what he's saying. Exactly, and that's where the whole. Um, thing came about. That's when the whole book really started. I met a guy who was a dog listener and that's his job. He listens to dogs and finds out why they're whining and he'll come and sort out your dog's sort of psychological problems. It's a job. And, um, and the moment he told me that he was a dog listener, I, I just went all chills and it was like, wow. Um, and and I, I just saw this whole story in my head in that moment and I knew my character wasn't going to be a dog listener but would be a dog whisperer who could actually talk to dogs but actually really talk to dogs <laughs> and and the whole story just came into my well like, you know all, lots of other things have been going on but basically the whole story just came into my head like like seeing a movie whoosh, while I was talking to this guy um, where are we now? Uh, Karen McMillan, is Hunter his character name too? I think it probably is. I think that's kind of where he, yeah. 
And uh, it's Josie Miller. Greetings, Shu from Connecticut, USA. It's 11.10 right now. Glad to catch a show this morning. Glad to have you here, Joseph. Oscar Stodinger. It is so incredible, relaxing to listen to you. Thank you. Artist Love, thank you for sharing your talent and experience with us. It's a pleasure. Can you remember this? Hairdryer is Naples yellow. My hairdryer is Naples yellow. It's not quite. It's a little bit dark. I'd say that was yellow ochre. <laughs> Close though. I'll have to remember next time I get a hairdryer. Yellow Waker. Uh, Naples Yellow. Chris Bajor, I was just thinking, where have I seen that colour before? I'll just love, love your drawing of Hunter. Thank you. Trails. Hi. Cheers, TM. Hi, Shu. Hi. How are you? Um, Alejandro. Yay. Uh, <laughs> Lisabella. Top of the morning. Uh, <laughs> it's a lovely day from Houston. There we go. I thought you were going to say from Dublin or something. Edith Garcia, thanks. Uh, Janice Glynis, my German short head pointer had lovely liver coloured spots and ears on large spot on her back. They're kind of like that, aren't they? Uh, Janice Glynis, yeah, yeah. Um, and Jennifer lies down. Hunter is looking great. Thank you, Alejandro. Nice video. Like it. Chris Mitchell, don't forget to leave a like. Yes. I should be saying, actually, I should be saying um, while I'm doing this, I should say subscribe. I'll be back in a second. Very quickly, while you are watching this, look for a subscribe button and click it and then click the little bell that pops up and then click the word all. And then you will be notified next time I have a live stream coming up because you'd much rather be watching this live than watching it afterwards. Go on, make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Live drawing channel. Absolutely. And you are live. Well, if you're watching it live, you're live. I'm live. We're, we're live here at the moment. I'm reading your questions. Um, Jennifer Lansdowne says, you make it look so simple. Well, it's just kind of years of practice. Isn't it? And Abby Schmutz says, lovely. Uh, Stacey Newby, he's marvellous. I think you have a soft spot, pun intended, for this breed. I think maybe I do somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Octavia B. Hunter looks amazing. Do you like working in other mediums like oil paints or garage? Mm, no. I, I first ever started in oils because I didn't know anything else and inherited my sister's old paints. Um, and so I kind of did that. And um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I tried painting gouache for quite a long time and I found that really quite hard work. Uh, it's, it it's it just takes a long time and and i don't think i've got the patience for it um whereas watercolor is sort of nice and quick and dries quickly and you can kind of work it and and i think if you keep when you found um a, a medium that you like then stick with it you know because if you keep thinking oh maybe i should try this maybe i should try that you, you're not putting the effort into getting good at the medium that you do like if you find something you know when i really sort of got going with watercolors i thought oh this i'm i'm really happy doing this um and i don't really every time i start doing something else i go mm, i could do this so much better in watercolor <laughs> um and and it, it's it's just my medium and i can't see why you know i don't feel the need to try other mediums at all um and, and if you found something that you really like, stick with it and get really good at it because it it, it takes a lot of working um, with a medium to understand it and to, to try all the different colours and how they blend and how they work and how the paper works. So there, there is a lot to learn <laughs> about one medium without f flitting about trying all sorts of other things. Stick with one thing and get good at it. It's like this pen. I keep I keep thinking I should be trying other pens. This is Rotary Tiki Graphic Pen. Dun, 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 dun. And when I found this, I fell in love with it. And um, it, it just suits me down to the ground. And every now and then I, I think, oh, I should try this pen. I should. I keep coming back to it because I know it and, and I know what it's going to do. Sometimes this is supposed to be a very precise kind of pen. And I think ideally, I think you're supposed to hold it very vertically and you'll get a very precise thickness of line that comes in all sorts of different thicknesses. And um, and sometimes I press too hard and <laughs> the, <laughs> the fibres split and it's whoa, fantastic. And you get these really great uh, sort of effects and things. So every, I, I buy these in boxes of 25 or something like that. And and every single one is different. And, and some of them are a bit 
don't run quite so thin some sort of pour ink out too much um, and you sort of get to know each one but but there's something I really love about that pen and if you keep working with one medium you get to know it and you find things off a work a lot easier <sighs> James Glynn, thanks for showing the photo. I did wonder about the missing leg. Hunter is a handsome boy. Yeah, well, uh, Janice, I, you probably come in a bit later. I sort of mentioned earlier that he's a three-legged dog. And um, he got thrown out of a truck in, in an accident um, by mistake. Well, I presume it was a mistake. Um, I hope it was a mistake. Uh, uh, Alejandro Moraga, lol, nice dog. Hunter's not going to lie. Like it's really good. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Joseph Miller, what a good looking character. Nice job, she. Thank you very much. Alejandro, I subscribe with all. Excellent little gummy 34. Hi, Shu. Hi, gummy. <laughs> Timmy B, that's great advice. Thank you. Artist Love, what kind of pen is it called? It's called a Rotaring Ticky Graphic. Mm -mm -mm. Let me put that there. Uh, that's a that's a sort of bent one um called rotary ticky graphic and i generally use uh, a 0 0.3 and they come in you know really fine 0, 0 0.01s i think something like that and they go up to tens or something it's really quite thick but i i find this one sometimes at a four i sometimes like a 0 0.4 um, but most of the time i i just use this number and um and you'll see it says pigmented ink and for me, that is very important because um, it dries waterproof. And uh, let's get back to Hunter. Hang on. Oh, we could just have him. Duh. There we go. <laughs> um, uh, pigmented ink dries quickly and it dries waterproof, which is really important for doing watercolour like this because you don't want to start putting watercolour on it and finding that the black ink, it starts smudging all over the place. And um, and if you're looking for a pen like that, you generally want to look for something that says pigmented ink. And somewhere here, <laughs> so, <laughs> there's another pen that I sometimes use, which I can't find here, which was there. Yeah, here we are. Sometimes I use this pen here, which is called there we are, a food pen. Fude, fude. It's Japanese. Fude, food. <laughs> it's made by Sailor of Japan anyway. And when you open this up, you see inside it's got a, a bent nib. And, and I quite like this one because if I get a piece of paper here. So, uh, so if you hold it right on the flat, uh, you'll get a really thick line but if you cut you make it more vertical you can see it's going thinner and if you draw it on the back you get a really thin line so it i mean it just looks japanese doesn't it that just looks like a japanese um sort of uh, character so uh, i quite like this one and and this uh, this comes with so you've got a little cartridge thing inside that you suck the ink up you can get cartridges i suppose um, but again um, quite often if you use um indian ink which is what we used to use in the old days indian ink is, is made of shellac basically which is crushed shellac beetles and um and they uh they try uh, indian ink dries waterproof uh, but it totally gums up pens um, and in the old days we used to use rotring isographs made by rotring um, and and you had to be really careful what inks you used in those because they would gum up and, and we'd have a kind of a weekly monday morning session of cleaning the pens um, and and this stuff here which is called carbon ink is again that's japanese uh, made by platinum uh, and this is what i use in the food pen um, and, and this again is, is really good and, and it's pigmented. Does it say pigment in there somewhere? I think, I don't know. Uh, it, it says it's somewhere that's pigment ink, but this is, this is pigment ink and this works really well. It's not that cheap, um, but it lasts a while and, and it doesn't gum up the pens and it dries quickly and it is waterproof, which to me is really important if you're uh, doing watercolor, line and ink sort of watercolor. Um, so there we go. <laughs> that was 
Uh, that was the artist love. Hope that answers that. Uh, Karina says, I agree. I'm really learning more to use my materials. Uh, Rotor and Techie graphic is so cool. I was practicing hatching with clouds and I'm getting a bit better, for example. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> and I know Karina. <laughs> Karina really does practice every day. I know. If you go, go follow Karina on Instagram and you'll see she's posting something pretty much every day. Um, and I just love, do you write the stories too? I do. I write the stories, yes. And that's kind of what I've been doing. I've been a children's author. I've written over 200 books <laughs> over the years. Um, and that's sort of what I do. But I sort of started doing this more and more. Uh, artist love i need a waterproof pen to use watercolor over thank you for sharing that's a pleasure and thank you thank you thank you for the great ink and pen advice and that kind of gets us to the end of the chat stream and i think that's almost an hour so i think i am going to go and have a nice cup of tea and uh, <laughs> say goodbye and tomorrow i will be back at 4 8 a.m p.m I'm not good at AMs and PM. Left and right, AM, PM, psh, um, four o'clock in the afternoon, UK time. And uh, if you kind of, uh, if you make sure you're subscribed, look, when you subscribe, press that little bell and then you'll get all the um, information when I sort of post new things. So I'll be posting up quite soon the next one in anticipation of tomorrow. So you can go and click and <laughs> put a little reminder on it. Um, and... Uh, that's round about it. So I will see you all again tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> you take care, I should say. <laughs> Let's do the whole thing. <sighs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> I've forgotten what I say. What do I say? Um, I say, yes, thanks for watching. And in the meantime, keep watching. No, I don't. I say, remember to keep practice, practice, practice. Keep drawing, drawing, drawing. Practice, practice, practice. And in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, practice. I've forgotten what I say. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. You take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>